Hey guys, welcome back. Today I got something I'm going to try to resurrect here. This is an Acer Office PC. And I'm not sure exactly the, the model. You can see it's designed for XP. It's got a Pentium 4 inside. Uh, DVD-ROM. And there are, looks like some USB ports on the front here that were covered off with something. I don't know what the hell all this is. Uh, but, you know, it's got to get cleaned up and then we can find out. I have to take a look at the side here. It says this is a model Acer Power FH. And we've got our Windows XP Pro key there. And manufacturing date 9-14-2006. If we look on the back, we can see it looks like there's parts just tossed in there. It's missing a power supply, so obviously we're going to have to get the power supply for it. And you see we got PS2. Uh, Serial, uh, printer parallel, uh, VGA out, four more USB ports, Ethernet, and then our audio ports. So there's no uh, expansion cards in here at all. And on this side, we've got our air intake for the CPU. So let's go ahead and pop this open. And, ugh. Ooh. Oh, she's nasty. I'm about ready to sneeze just looking at it in here. Oh, this one's dirty. I haven't even looked inside this one yet, and I can see why. I see the fan is just bouncing around in here. Ah, oh, that's cake full of all kinds of nasty shit. This is the little uh, shroud that goes from the heat sink to like close to this thing so I can just suck in air. We got some dust bunnies in there. I gotta lay this thing on its side here. This is this thing is something else. Wow. Uh we do got some dust critters living down there though. Got a PCI Express slot, a couple PCI slots. Uh it takes two sticks of probably DDR2 and socket 775 and that is our Pentium 4 something Pentium 4 524 alright so that's like 3 gigahertz CPU and look at all the dirt on this thing this thing came from actually came from an office but I think this may have been back in the manufacturing part of it or something either that or it was in the office for decades, and they never bothered to, to clean the office very well. I can't imagine an office having that much, like, sooty, black, powdery dirt in it. I don't know. But when I go through, I'm going to take it apart and start getting it cleaned. It needs a lot of cleaning. All right, as you can see, I've got this uh, case pretty much stripped out. Got the motherboard. Got the motherboard here. All the parts. Are just filthy. That's the top of the optical drive there. Front panel. So, I mean, I don't know. When it, when things are this bad, I mean, where do you guys draw the line at where you would actually, you know, take it apart, take the time to clean it and uh, see if it works? I mean, I gotta, I think I'm gonna clean the motherboard off and enough to just test to see if it works first before I do anything else. But where do you guys draw the line with something this dirty and this disgusting? I mean, I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna clean the whole thing if it works and and uh, try and get it back together and do something with it. But I know that, you know, some of you are probably thinking it's not even worth it. So I'm just curious, where would you guys draw the line on this one? Uh, but anyways, I'm going to soldier on here. I'm going to start getting this stuff all cleaned up. Once everything's cleaned, I'll get it put back together, if the motherboard works. And uh, take up a power supply for it. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see where we're at. That puts an end to that. I'm looking at these caps right here, and they're all bulged on the top. So, I've got a few more of these, and I'm going to have to go check those and see how the caps are. Hopefully they're not as dirty as this one either. Alright, so I found this one, which seems to be in a little bit better shape. Um, and on the inside, it's, it is dirty, as you can see, but just not quite as dirty as the other one. Uh, the main thing is the caps on this one, at first glance, appear to be good. So I'm not even going to take a chance with that other one. Obviously, once the caps start to go, they're junk. Or they have to be recapped, and these probably aren't worth recapping. So I'm going to pull this main board out of here, and this is what we're going to use for that other one. Or we'll just end up cleaning up and checking out this system here. 
Yeah, so some things have happened. So after getting everything together, the power supply decided it didn't want to function anymore. So I just set another one on top of it for now and began attempting to install Windows 98. Surprisingly, the install went pretty easy, but the issues came up trying to get drivers installed. I knew there were no drivers for the 946 series chipset, but I assumed I'd be able to work around that somehow. Unfortunately, there were also no drivers to be found for the sound or network either, so I ended up abandoning that idea pretty quickly. Instead, I decided to install Windows 2000 Service Pack 4. I haven't used Windows 2000 in a long time, but I do remember using it in the past, and it was just such a solid OS. The Windows 2000 drivers were also available for the system, so that was a bonus. I still had only one gigabyte of RAM installed from the Windows 98 attempt, but I know that I can increase that later on with this OS. The drivers all installed without issue, and I was even able to install the drivers for the Sound Blaster PCI card, which was from an OEM machine, and that thing always gives me grief. The only trouble that I had was with the Ethernet driver, since the ones that I found for this motherboard were actually wrong, but a little bit of detective work, and I was able to figure it out. And I wanted to see if the system would pull off some games using the 946 integrated graphics. I didn't expect too much, but it actually did a little better than I thought it would, as you guys can see here. So what about web browsing? Well, thanks to a lot of patching and an extended kernel patch from a Japanese guy known as Black Wing Cat, I will link his site below, uh, you can run Firefox up to 52 ESR, so almost any site you go to will work, even YouTube if your CPU can handle it. I'm going to leave some links below for the Firefox version and the update pack that includes all the updates as well.
We now have two gigs of RAM. I did uh, add another stick. Uh, we have a Radeon HD 2600 Pro, our Sound Blaster sound card. Here's a 160 gig hard drive that's got the OS around it. And this is just a 120 gig hard drive that I, I just copied a bunch of stuff over and stuck it in here just for easy access. Even though the USB flash drive works, that's a pain in the ass copying back and forth. And our SATA. Uh, optical drive. So and this is all SATA. We have everything hooked up by SATA right now. But yeah, she cleaned up rather nicely, didn't she? Remember how dirty and dusty this thing was before? So I just got a few little parts got to put back together and we can close it up. But I just want to get this testing done on here. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty impressed. So I needed to decide what GPU do I want to install. And I decided to go with the Radeon HD 2600 Pro. It's definitely not the most powerful GPU, but I think it would be a good match for the era of games that a system like this would end up playing. And a bonus is it requires no 6-pin power cable, which this power supply doesn't have. Unfortunately, there were no official drivers available for Windows 2000 for the uh, 2600 Pro, but luckily that's something else that Blackwing Cat has been working on, and the first driver I tried from him worked like a charm. There are plenty of videos out there showing the process of patching and updating Windows 2000 to be more functional. And um, I want to link one of those below as well. And you can search for the others if you want. But once the graphics drivers were installed, it was time to check out the performance in a couple of the games that we had already tested. As you can see, a dedicated GPU, even one as mediocre as a 2600 Pro, makes all the difference in the world. I was actually pretty impressed with the performance and also the sheer stability. It seems that the CPU is really what is holding this system back right now. Hyperthreading doesn't register, even when it is enabled, so it's only run on one core and you can tell that it's struggling. There are other options I may consider. I definitely want to check this out more in depth a little bit later on. So I gotta say, I was actually pretty impressed with the performance and also just the sheer stability of this, you know, trying to go through different drivers and stuff. Uh, it seems the CPU is really what's holding this system back right now. Hyperthreading doesn't register even when it's enabled in the BIOS, so it's only running on one core and uh, you can tell that it's struggling. There are other options that I may consider. I definitely want to check this out more in depth a little bit later on. Windows 2000 was always a standout for me. It never crashed, never had driver issues, and just had the simplicity without any of the crap. It was rock solid for the enterprise and server market, and it had support up until 2010, which was pretty incredible. It supports multiple cores as well as up to 4 gigabytes of RAM, unlike Windows 98, and it has way more driver support by far. So we'll have to see where this project takes us. Uh, who knows what's in store for the future with this system. Now there we have it, got her back together. She's, you know, she's a little scuffed up and stuff. A little, a little scuffed right here from where I had to scrub that sticker residue off. But, uh, had, I mean, she's an old beast, so, um, I don't know. But anyways, I don't know what to do with this thing now. Right now it's got the Pentium 4, um, 524, I believe it was, 3 gigahertz in there, 2 gigs of RAM. Uh, we've got the uh, Radeon HD 2600 Pro and the Sound Blaster sound card. Windows 2000, Service Pack 4 with um all the all the goodies that i i talked about uh so yeah there's a lot we can do with it uh, i'm dying to just load up a whole bunch of games and test it out with this and, and see how it does but if you guys have any ideas i'm gonna leave this completely up to you if there's something you guys want to see let me know because i do have i do have other gpus but with the setup that's in here now unless this is a core 2 duo uh it's really kind of a waste to put a different gpu in here this one seems to keep up pretty good with this but I mean, I've got other uh, Pentium 4s, um, you know, some Cedar Mill. Uh, I've got a, I think I've got one Celeron, a Cedar Mill Celeron. I've got some Pentium Ds. I mean, I could try it out with a Pentium D, or I could put a uh, 800 megahertz front side bus Core 2 Duo, like a E4300 or 4400 in here, uh, you know, which would be a big upgrade from here. And I believe... Uh, you know, because I enabled hyper threading on this P4 and it doesn't, I don't think it registers at Windows 2000, but I believe multiple cores do. So uh, something with two cores, like a Pentium D or a Core 2 Duo would be interesting. So you guys let me know what you think.
Uh, I really, I, I need some ideas here, and I'm going to leave that up to you guys, what you guys want to see me do on this here. And if you don't want to see anything, if you want to just see this thing tossed to the curb, then, you know, let me know. I'll probably do that, too. But I'm just kidding. Anyways, you guys take care, and I will see you on the next one.